Here, we are going to look at certain geometric interpretations or geometric tools used in connection with force analysis involving friction. Uh, this was very useful in olden days when graphical techniques were uh, prevalent. Uh, but even today, on a conceptual level, uh, these interpretations or these tools are very helpful. So let us start with a simple phenomena of a body sliding down an inclined plane. So let's go here. So here we have this plane which can be inclined at any angle and on it we have kept this block. Uh, when the plane is uh, inclined, the block will tend to slide. But friction is going to keep it from sliding down. For example, if I incline it uh, up to this angle, uh, it is not sliding. Up to this angle also it is not sliding. So we are going to incline the plane till the block starts sliding down and then we are going to freeze that angle. So let's see. Let's start from the horizontal position and we are increasing the angle then ever so slowly till it just starts sliding down and then we are going to read that angle. So this is the angle at which the block starts sliding down. Now how this happens? This is a very simple phenomenon but look at the forces that are involved. So here is the force diagram. I haven't shown all the forces but I have shown only the weight and that too split into two components W sin theta down the uh, inclined plane and W cos theta normal or perpendicular to it. And as you can see uh, with the inclination of the plane both these components are going to vary like this. Well because this is pressed uh, on the plane the plane is going to give rise to normal reaction exactly equal and opposite to W cos theta and this normal reaction will potentially build some friction. I am saying potentially because friction will not develop unless there is a tendency to move and here indeed we have a tendency to slide down. So a frictional force will develop up to this maximum given by mu the coefficient of friction multiplied by n the normal reaction and it will try to compensate this W sin theta but only up to a certain extent as we incline the plane more and more uh, W sin theta becomes dominant while the other two forces n and mu n they become weaker and weaker and therefore a stage is going to come where the two planes down the plane and the frictional force are going to balance each other and at that point the block will just start sliding. So let us write that condition. So W sin theta the downward force is equal to mu W cos theta the breaking force and W will cancel so this is true for blocks of all weights and then we get tan theta the inclination of the plane is equal to mu the coefficient of friction. So this gives us an angle of inclination at which the block will start sliding. It is tan inverse of the coefficient of friction. This angle is also called as the angle of friction. Now this angle of friction that we studied has no particular direction. That is uh, we could have inclined the plane in any which way like this plane here which is mounted on a kind of ball joint. So let's keep a, uh, keep a block here and uh, we are going to set it into motion. So as you can see it is kind of wobbling with greater and greater amplitude and at a certain inclination it starts sliding. Let us study the normal to this plane. It will make it easier to observe it. So as you can see the normal is deviating from the uh, vertical more and more and at a certain angle the block takes off. So the limiting position of this normal is defined by a kind of cone. Let us watch it in the top view. And so far the normal is within the cone, nothing will happen. But the moment it approaches the surface, uh, the block takes off. So this particular cone, whose half angle will naturally be the uh, angle of friction, is called as the cone of friction. Finally, let us see a useful concept and a tool called as friction circle. This is again useful more in graphical analysis of rotating bodies having friction on their periphery. So they are circular in shape. For example, uh, there is a brake drum or it could be a pin joint in a mechanism. So here is a brake drum rotating in clockwise direction and this is a brake shoe pressed against it with this force N. Naturally a force mu N, the friction develops between the two. I have shown the forces here a little bit magnified and we can find their resultant R. Interestingly, the angle between the resultant and the normal reaction happens to be the frictional angle. 
So theta is tan inverse of mu. So this is another definition of uh, angle of friction. Uh, let us now show this resultant on uh, its actual location on the drum. And this point at which it acts is actually going to travel around the periphery as the drum rotates. So we can show these forces at various positions. And these forces then sort of form an envelope. They suggest a circle here. And that is the envelope of these forces called as the friction circle. Uh, what is the use of friction circle? Well, it quickly allows you to plot the resultant at any point. Uh, the resultant of normal reaction and frictional force. Just start from a point on the periphery and draw a tangent to the friction circle and you are done.